So let's hop straight into level modding. The first thing you're going to want to do is duplicate the demo modded scene in the examples folder of the mod project. Rename that to something that is reflective of what your scene is and move it to its own folder. The scene contains everything you'll need to get started. It has a bunch of weapons laid out for you, some enemy spawn points, player start. The wave object is where the endless wave spawner UI comes in. The bench object is where the weapon spawning bench comes in. For now, we're just gonna turn all that off. From here, building the scene is exactly like building a scene in Unity under any other circumstances. So we're gonna fast forward a bit. Basically, I bring in the models for the scene, set them to static, um, and then spend a little time painting a terrain. Something to note is that you have access to any base Unity components when creating your scene. So any rigid bodies, joints, colliders, UI stuff, you name it, if it's built into Unity, it'll work bringing it in in a modded scene. Um, so we're showing a example here of me painting in some terrain. The terrain system works um, because it's built into Unity. Um, anything from the asset store uh, is not going to be included in the game project files um, unless explicitly mentioned in the modding documentation. So none of that will, will be able to be interpreted from serialization on the game side. So yeah, once you've uh, got all of your meshes brought in and your collider set up, that's the meat of what is required to build a mod. Um, the next thing you want to do is place those core components and set some music. So the music loader object will either uh, load a track from an asset address. So if you have your own custom music that you would like to include in the mod for the level, then you can do that. Otherwise, there is a drop down for fallback music, and you can pick the music from any of the vanilla game levels. The player start will set where the player starts, obviously, uh, position it and rotate it. Uh, scale doesn't do anything, but yeah, you can choose the starting position and rotation. Here I'm showing the bench, so wherever you want the weapon spawning bench to spawn in, you can orient that. The wave spawning UI can also be placed. The arrow will indicate the direction from which the user accesses it. Something to note about enemy spawns, you'll have to use the enemy spawn point object um, as shown here. It's just a script that points to uh, either a prefab address or uh, you can pick a fallback enemy from the vanilla game. And here you can see I have all of the different uh, Teletubbies, uh, all of their, their prefabs addressed on the, on the four different spawn points. Note that putting the enemy prefab in there directly will not work because the enemy prefab you author in the modding project is just a template. Um, there's a bit of additional construction of systems that goes on when the mod is loaded, um, when the game starts up. Uh, or when mod settings are changed in the main menu. In the prefabs folder of the project, you can access all of these prefabs. Um, so if you delete something or are starting from scratch, you can get it back. Probably the most common one you'll use is the enemy spawn because um, you can just drag a bunch of those in. There's also some weapon placeholders. Right now, the guns are the only ones that have actual placeholders in there, but you can go into the placeholders script and there's a drop down to pick the different weapons. Uh, you can also set the prefab address if you want to set it to load in modded content. The box with the image on it will be destroyed when the game loads. It's just to give a signifier of scale and position. So the box doesn't really matter so much and you if you want to include a custom one, yeah, the box is gonna fit anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, you can go in and find the address of other weapon configs and uh, go ahead and bring them in.
Next up, we're going to be looking at how to create breakable objects. This is useful for doors and windows. You can also generate furniture. So the way this is done is with a Blender add-on called Cell Fracture. So you can look up how to use this or just uh, follow along on screen here. Uh, so basically what it does is it uses a noise pattern to break up object an object into multiple parts. Um, it uses Boolean operators, so it does have some limitations we will see here shortly. Basically, uh, because it's using Booleans, if your mesh is not manifold, you'll get something like this where it errors out and doesn't complete the process and you get these extra chunks. If you delete those extra chunks, um, it'll just be uh, empty void space. And so yeah, you want to make sure that your meshes are manifold or watertight or uh, however you want to say it. Yeah, and you can look up tutorials for that um, if you don't know what that means. But yeah, once your mesh is prepared, go ahead and run the cell fracture. You probably want to use smaller number um, than what is pictured here. This is actually quite dense. It is performant because this is a rather small scene, but yeah. If you find that your scene is not as performant, um, and if you think it's due to these breakables, because uh, each one of these fragments is going to be its own rigid body, so you can imagine, especially on Quest, you get a lot of those, and it'll it'll kind of bog it down. The other thing you want to make sure is that the origin of your mesh uh, matches that of the original uh, mesh. So one strategy would be to group all of the fragments and export them as a group, making sure that the origin of that group is the same as the original mesh. I kind of botch it in the example here, um, but you can correct that in Unity as well just by adding another parent transform um, and making sure that that aligns um, with the original mesh transform. Basically, you are creating a prefab of all of these chunks together and when the uh, hit points of a breakable reach zero it will swap uh, the original mesh for the prefab with all of the chunks with their physics setup. So here I'm showing uh, once the chunks are exported bringing them into unity and you see uh, with the with the transforms aligned it just comes right in so yeah, you'll want to set all of your chunks, uh, make sure they have colliders, make sure they have a rigid body. Uh, something not shown here is that the original mesh should also have a rigid body so that it has full collision detection. Uh, set it to kinematic, however, because uh, you don't want your door to fall over. Um, if it's something like a small piece of furniture, maybe you don't want it kinematic, and that will allow it to react to forces even before it breaks. But yeah, for parts of the level like doors and windows uh, set those to kinematic and make sure they have a rigid body and collider on them and then set up the destructible profile that will essentially just point to the uh, prefab address of your fragment gr uh, group prefab as well as set a number of hit points Another thing you can do with the destruct profile is set custom audio clips um, as well as choose a, a built-in audio clip. It's just based on the material that the object is made out of. So metal will give you a metal clangy sound. When it breaks, glass will give you a you know a glass breaking sound, um, and so on and so forth. These are just impact sounds that match the material, and those are audio files that are already built into the game project. And as I said, you can add your own audio clip as well if you like. You just gotta make sure that it is included in one of your asset bundles. Um, however, the most important thing is to make sure that the destroyed object prefab address is set to the address of the prefab containing your group of broken fragments.
Finally, you'll want to make sure that your scene has a nav mesh setup. This is standard procedure for Unity scenes. Uh, there's not really going to be anything different. You just got to make sure that anything you want your enemies to be able to walk on is set to uh, navigation static. Any doors or furniture can have a nav mesh obstacle added to them. And finally, we'll get our asset bundles set up. So when you have some assets selected in the preview window, there should be an asset bundle field at the bottom. So if you click this and click new, it'll give you a text box so you can create your own bundle as shown here. Uh, make sure that these, this name is unique. If it is the same as other mods, it will create clashes and prevent loading. Um, so make sure that you set up your own um, and don't use the ones included in the example project. For scenes, you'll want to be sure that the scene bundle is separate from the bundle containing its assets. It's a, just a limitation of Unity that only scenes can be in bundles that contain scenes. So for scenes, you'll need at least two. If you're adding custom enemies like this, you'll probably want to break those out as well. All of the art assets that are used, all of the prefabs, you're going to want to make sure that um, those are assigned to their appropriate bundles. So as I'm showing here, all of the Teletubbies are added to the Teletubby enemies asset bundle uh, along with all of their art. And then the, the textures and the nav mesh data are added to the Teletubby scene assets bundle. And then the scene itself is added to the Teletubby scene asset. Um, so you want to make sure that all of the assets are separated out into the asset, the scene asset bundle and um, the scene is in its own bundle. Also make sure any breakable prefabs that you created are in the scene assets bundle and not the scene bundle. And finally, we will go over the Lua script and creating a menu image. So in the data init Lua script, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you uh, set up a table for the scene. Um, this just contains uh, the address to the scene itself, the address to a sprite to use in the UI, and a name to display on the main menu. Uh, once you've created a table for that scene, you add that table to the global scene table, and uh, you can just use the scene address to uh, be the key for uh, that entry as the, the scene address should be unique anyway, or Unity's gonna, gonna break. Any additional enemies that you wanna add, make sure that they are added to the NPC table, as well as any custom weapons that are added to the game. Make sure that those are added to the weapons table. And from there, the building and loading procedure is the same as anything else. So please refer to the weapons modding tutorial if you don't know how to do that.